Okay, folks, listen, summer is a monsters, right? So listen, I got to keep it true to how I think and what I show you guys, right? So listen, today we're going to do a smother. You know, listen, listen to this. This is a southern smothered okra and shrimp. And if you know me, you know we got to add a little andouille to it. Let's get it. Okay, so look, first thing I'm going to do is we're going to fly over some of these ingredients right here. Now, don't let this get you, you know, get you uh, in an uproar because it looks like it's a lot, right? I use these bowls because I'm going back to the, the basics. If you measure out all of your ingredients and you set them aside like this, then you arrange them how when you're cooking, you use them. If you put them in that order, I promise you, cooking is not gonna be a chore, right? All right, so I don't know if you guys were able to see it, but you know what, we got some shrimp right here. You guys can load it up however you want to. And don't forget the full ingredient list will be on my website. That's smokingandgrillingwithab.com and that's witab.com. Now what I'm getting ready to do is I'm getting ready to prep my, my okra, right? So I'm gonna bring this over here. We'll just stage it like this. I'm gonna use the same bowl. I've already washed and cleaned these. All right, before we do this, listen, like I say, I'm going back to the basics. So if you take pay attention right here, listen, before you cook, this is just my advice to make everything super easy. Always have yourself some hot, soapy water, right? So as I dump these, and I'm using these, I usually put them there. Anytime something is cooking, I wash it, and then I put it, you know, so it'll start drying. That way, when I'm done cooking, I'm done with it. Now, everybody that eat, they can wash their own plates and dishes. Now, we doing okra, right? So I, I'm interested in hearing what everybody gonna say about the okra. Like, oh, I don't like okra, all that old kind of stuff. But it's funny, I get so many people to tell me that, yet they eat the okra and everything that I make, I try to put okra in it, unless you got an allergic reaction to it, right? So listen, I'm cutting these down into a bite-sized piece, right? So that's good. Obviously, I'm not finna use the bulkhead and the tail part, I discard. So listen, I'm not finna bore you guys. I'm just getting ready to just run through this real quick. Now that we done the okra, right? You guys can just see it, right? Now we're gonna go ahead and prep these uh these tomatoes. Now, I just wanna talk to you guys about this right here. Once you make it, you can make it like this, you know, you can always substitute your tomatoes with like canned tomatoes, like fire roasted or something like that. This right here, I'm just trying to get into the habit of cooking more, making videos using fresh, you know, ingredients, right? So obviously you saw them cook to the, you know, I mean hook to the uh to the vine. Right? Hey, I got a little fact for y'all. You probably won't believe this, but you see this little piece right here that I'm pulling off of here? If I can get it with these gloves on, if I can get it off. Do you know that little sticker right there is edible? I think it has to be. I don't know, the jury's still out in my mind, but that's just a little, I'm gonna just call that a fun fact. Now, what I'm getting ready to do is, I'm just getting ready to cut this down into some slices. You know what I mean? Cause what I wanna do is I wanna dice it, right? I'm gonna show you like this way. You know what I mean? We got them here. Now, listen, you can cut this centerpiece out of here like this. This is for those who really want to get in there and not for it to be so, I guess, tomato pasty, right? I like to leave it in there. I'm just showing you. And then I just cut this down into like, you know, dice pieces like this. And then when we let this simmer and cook, these firm pieces right here get nice and soft, right? Super easy. You got to do it any kind of way you want to. And then I'm going to show you one time before we cut a break away from this. This is what it looks like if you don't take the center part out with all of the seeds. I like it all. You know what I mean? So that's the way it looks. It's just going to have a little bit of the seed in there too. You know what I mean? So then you could take this, get yourself a bowl, right? And then what you do is just take it and start putting it all in here like that. Now, like again, I'm not going to bore you. You know what? You'd cut them down to the size that you like. I like the bigger size. I like to have a little texture. You know what I mean? And I like to be able to see it. I don't want it to be 100% disintegration. Right, so about that size. Let me finish up the rest, and then we move on to the next. Now check it out, fam. Now I know y'all heard me in the very beginning. I said, if you know me, we gonna have a little andouille in here. Now, just to give those who don't even do this, pork you know what i mean uh, this is a chicken andouille very very flavorful it's made by uh Hoffy, if you guys can find it you know what i mean i don't want to gatekeep nothing from nobody i want you guys to be able to make exactly what i make and i want it to taste true and good you know what i mean so this is it right here all right so look rough chop on the onion obviously even these layers how do you know how an uh, onion is layered it's going to separate spread out releases you know, flavor into the pot, right? Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and season up, you know, our shrimp, right? So I'm gonna do it like this. Let me move this out the way. I'm looking for my salt and I'm looking for my my pepper. 
right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my pepper because you can't never have too much pepper, all right? I know that sounds wild. Some of y'all are like, what? But I gotta level up. Now we got the salt right there. I'm gonna just show you, this is for those of you guys that already have that. Look at this right here. This is my Creole kick, right? I'm gonna add a little bit of this to it, you know, for a little bit of flavor. This right here kind of like certified a dish, right? So just a little bit, you don't need a whole lot. You know what I mean? We just want the profile to be there, right? And then this is a low sodium product, right? So listen, we can add a little bit of salt to it. You know what I mean? Don't need a whole lot. We just add a little bit to it. You know what I mean? Just to enhance the flavor and just to wake it up, right? Get in there with your hand. Now we just finna, you know, massage this. We don't want to beat the flesh up of the shrimp. All right, so I like to let my seasoning sit on my shrimp just for, you know, at least five minutes. You know, that way, like I said, it's a fleshy, uh, type of meat, you know what I mean? So it, it's like the seasoning will soak down inside of uh, the shrimp and get in there. That, that's what makes the flavor, right? You wanna have the flavor in the shrimp, not just on the outside, right? So now we are gonna go ahead and uh, get everything set up. Go with about a, a medium flame, leave that up. Now I'll be using Branch of Vine. This is my infused extra virgin olive oil, right? I use the garlic. That's really like my go-to garlic and the scallion. Either one of those work out fine. I like to put in just maybe like a couple of tablespoons. You know what I mean? I'm using a big pan. So that'll roll. Once this heats up, I'm gonna drop in just a little bit of this uh, butter. You know, the olive oil will protect the butter, keep it from burning. Then we're gonna go ahead and cook that shrimp. All right, so you see how it's melted? Look, you don't even see no brown. For those of you guys that don't know, the olive oil protects the butter and keeps it from burning so fast. You know what I mean? You can still burn it, but that tell me you, well, you way too hot. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just drop this in here like this. We wanna make sure that they all flat. And we only gonna cook these for about three or four minutes. It really depends on your heat, right? So one of the telltale signs that you guys can find out how this is uh, cooking is when you look at it, if you notice some of these are open like that, as they cook, they close, folks. Right? Don't forget, the fire is in the center. You know what I mean? So I kinda like stay away from that. You know what I mean? Uh, we'll just do it like this so it'll have a little time to spread. Then I'll move them around. Now, while I'm talking, I told you just, I'm gonna say four minutes, two minutes on each side on a flame that look like that. Hopefully you guys are being able to pick it up. That'll do it. All right, so after two minutes, you know, we just go ahead and give it a flip. Now, anything that you see dark, you know what that is? That's the pepper. Don't forget, pepper takes on a way different taste than you just sprinkling pepper on your eggs, right? So we just flip them all over. And then by the time I finish these, they probably only gonna need about 30 seconds. Now check this out. This right here at the bottom, fine usually in my mind goes by whatever sticks. Now I'm using hex clad, hex clad, nothing really sticks to the bottom of it, but I still got a lot of seasoning. You can see the color of my, uh, my butter and my olive oil. You know, you know we got that, we cook with uh, Creole kick, salt, pepper, you know what I mean? And then we had the flesh of the shrimp in there. So that right there is fire, right? So now I'm gonna take my chopped onions, right? We put those in there. You don't hear no whole lot of sizzle because I had turned the uh, fire off, but I'm bringing everything back up. This is okay. Don't forget, I do. You gotta do it however you want to. You can go onion and okra, but for myself, I like to go onion first get them to going because it seemed like it take an onion a little bit longer to cook down you know and to sweat that that flavor out of here all right so look look at this right here they start it's up to you now listen i've been going for about i'm gonna tell you guys i've probably been going for about three minutes i usually like to give it one minute head start but the next thing i'm getting ready to do is and how did this one slip in there like that let me see oh it is cut all right so now we're gonna go ahead and add our okra I got it. Y'all talk to me down in the comment section below and tell me how you don't like okra. But my folks that's from the south down there, listen, it ain't real unless it got that okra in it. You know what I mean? So I usually make things both ways. I'm telling you guys now, you can just not add okra to it if you don't want to. But the flavor here and what you get from this is just way over the top, folks. Now, listen, this is what I like to do. I like to stir it a couple of times, right? Now, this is what it looks like at 10 minutes, right? You know what I mean? Uh, so let's go ahead and give it a stir. You can see the okra starting to loosen up, you know, get a little bit soft. You can still see the onion. See why we went with a rough chop and not go ahead and dice it down small? Look at this right here. Now, I said I'm gonna probably go about 15, like, 
in the beginning, I think I said 15 to 20 minutes. We're going to come back in another five minutes. Oh, man, this is nice right here, folks. Trust me. And of all y'all to keep talking about y'all don't eat no okra, try this, please. All right. Let's go ahead and check it out. 15 minutes in. Right? Oh, I'm loving what I'm seeing. I like the way when I push this around with this spatula, how it feels, right? So, I told you guys we finna add that andouille in. Right? Here we go. You don't need a whole lot of andouille. You just want some in here to give that flavor away and to give it that little bit of a meaty, you know, bite to it. Now, for those of you guys that don't want to do the shrimp, this right here would take the place of your shrimp. But if you know me, I'm going to do shrimp and the andouille. So what you see me do right now is I want to make sure this gets on the bottom of the pan because I want it to cook, right? I want it to heat up and release that orange seasoning that you see in there. Hello, folks. That's that andouille. All right, folks. It's been five minutes, right? You can see it's starting to sweat. Since we put that lid on the top, you see how it's starting to become shiny and glistening? Now, I'll just move this over here like this. I'm not trying to put the char on there, but you see this right here? I'm gonna give you a little heads up too. You know, if we had a, uh, a bowl of rice, we could just put this on the top right there, right? Now listen, you see all of these ingredients I have right here? I left them like this so you guys can just see. I don't need them in no specific order. You know why? Because now it's getting ready to become a dump and go, right? Only thing I gotta do is get two tablespoons of my paste, and then I'm gonna talk to you guys about using water. If you've been following me for a minute, you know what I'm getting ready to say. But anybody that's new, I'm finna bring you into the game. All right, so we just wanna put a couple heaping tablespoons of uh, tomato paste in here, right? Now I'm finna come with my tomatoes. Remember, everything gotta go in there. No specific order at all, right? Now these red chili flakes, you gotta do them how you want to. If you want it to have a little bit of a bite, great. If you want it to be, you know, a little less, you know, just make your adjustments. All right, so now I'm getting ready to just give this like a, a little mix, right? We're gonna want them tomatoes. Don't forget, we use fresh tomatoes. Now, remember I told you you can use like a stewed tomato, something like a, uh, what, what am I trying to say? Something like a, a fire roasted or something like that to come in a can, you can do that. Listen, the flavor would be outstanding, you know what I mean? But right now, we're gonna try to use fresh ingredients since it's summertime and they're readily available to everybody. All right, so listen, let's address this part right here. Right here is where I could add water to it if I would like, right? I don't wanna do that, and if you've been following me for a minute, you know what I always tell you guys. Listen, if it take water, you substitute it. You can use stock or broth, because we want that flavor, right? So, I'm gonna go ahead and use this since I got it already measured out. Go ahead and just add myself in some. You know what I mean? Uh, this right here, do it, don't forget. It's better than bouillon, this is concentrated. But look at, the, you see the color change? You guys already know this is gonna be flavorful, right? So, I'm gonna take this, now look in this pan right here. Now we are gonna add this, and then we gotta bring it back up to a boil, right? And then we are gonna set it to simmer. But, first things first. Okay, so you can see we working our way back up to a boil. But it's gonna look like this, because once I get everything nice and hot and stirred up together, I'm gonna set it for a simmer. Right, so now I'm gonna add just a little bit of this tomato, I mean, excuse me, this garlic paste. I know some of y'all that have been following me, I can hear my friend right now, Gerald, saying, hey, bruh, what's up with you not using fresh garlic? What I'm doing is, I found this in my fridge, I'm just getting rid of it all. You know what I mean? But you guys can use paste. I prefer to use, you know what I mean? I prefer to use fresh, you know what I mean? But garlic, we just gotta get that flavor in here too. Now you guys can look at that. You can see the stem, the steam coming off of it. I just tasted it before I turned the camera back on and I can tell you right now, it don't need nothing, folks. Just imagine all of these flavors right now. And what we doing is as we cooking this now, now they are becoming a married couple, right? So once I have it like this, you remember our bay leaves? That's the last thing that you wanna put in here. I'll just put them in here like this. And then I'm gonna cover this just the way you see it. That's the way you want yours, right? I'm gonna cover it so it'll simmer for about, I'm gonna say about 40 minutes. All right, so come on in and take a look at this right now. This is after like about 35 minutes, right? I told you I like to go about 40, you know what I mean? Uh, but when I do this, I'm looking at the thickness. I'm telling you guys, this right here is right. You don't need to do nothing else. Now we didn't already cooked our shrimp, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just add my shrimp to it. 
as soon as I get my shrimp in the inside, look at this right here. Yes, sir. Now, the heat from this will go ahead and warm up your shrimp, right, and get you where you need to be. Now, while you can catch it, you know, catch up with your bay leaves, now you can just take them out. Remember, we had three. Some of you guys told me, like, down in the comment section, that y'all don't even take the bay leaves out. Sometime I do. I'll look for them. If I don't find them, I don't do no extensive, you know, search, and I'll just leave them in there, you know? All right, so fires off look at that right there this is what you want to serve folks you could just see the flavor you see that right there you hardly don't even see the okra you know what i mean but there it is there here's some right here yes sir we got andouille right and then of course we got the shrimp look at that right there All right, folks, listen, I done already took a picture of it. You know, I ain't made it a star in the pot. I'll figure out what I'm gonna do, which I'm gonna use the one in the bowl or am I gonna use the one in the pot, right? But hey, either way, you guys can look at that. I'll bring it out here so you guys can see. You can just see all of the flavors. Don't forget, we tasted as we went. We already knew it tasted good. So when you get here, you don't have no mishaps, I promise you. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just give me a little bit of that rice. I can see I got tomato, okra, and I got a nice piece of shrimp on there. You see that right there? I'm not finna torture y'all. Check this out. Cheers. Mm. I don't know, folks. Y'all gotta try this. You know what I mean? Especially for the people that don't really never get a chance to have none of the Southern flavors. This right here, if this don't take you into the heart of being down South, whether you Creole or Cajun, this is the dish for you. Super easy to make. It's a little bit of prep work. Listen, I don't want to over talk nothing. I want you guys to try it. Come back, talk to me down in the comment section below and let me know what else would you have done to make this over the top or even come back and tell me like, AB, this is another 100. This is out the ballpark. Now, listen, if you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button and tell everybody out there, there's a channel out here that's simplifying these recipes and taking the mystery out of cooking. It's been a minute, folks, that I had something that's as flavorful as this on my channel. So go out, get your ingredients, and make this. And guess what, folks? I'm out. Peace.